hi everybody. Um, you will know Elizabeth from my last video um, where Elizabeth opened up about having breast cancer and the implications that it had on her and her life and um, the decisions that she has to face. Um, but one of the main reasons that Elizabeth got in touch with me was because you wanted to interview me mm -hmm. yep. for your blog. <laughs> yep. Do you want to tell everybody um, um, what you're doing yeah. and, and, and what, your, what your charity is again? Yeah, um, well I'm blogging on my, my personal charity, well, not my personal charity, I'm blogging on the charity that I run's website, so Kicks Count website, about the breast cancer journey that I'm going on. Um, in terms of just to give an insight into what's happening, what's it's like, what's the, the emotions behind it. Um, and also to raise awareness of the other charity, Copper Feel, um, to try and make sure more women are aware of their breasts, more women know to check them and at a young age. You know, it's not a case of this is an older woman's disease. It can affect anyone. Um, so everybody needs to be aware of exactly what their body is like and get to know the, what's normal for them. So you wanted to interview yes. me yes. about what, what happened to me. Yes. So go well, what I'm gonna, <laughs> well, the thing is, I've looked up loads of things on the internet. I've looked up um, all the medical side of it. I know how the procedures work. What I don't know is how you feel at the end of it. Do, you, do, they, do they still feel like part of you? Do you still feel um, as you did before? Yeah. Or do you feel really differently towards your body now than you did before you had the mastectomies and reconstructions? It's really, I feel like I've gone through so many stages mm. in feelings about what happened. Yeah. Um, I mean, the, 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 for me, the first um, initial decision to get them, them removed mm. and reconstructed was like, that's it, that's what I want. Yeah. Um, I know what I want, I want them both off, I want to get rid mm. of the chance, it was such a high risk, yeah. it was 85%. Um, my, my, my grandma had it at such a young age, mm. in her 30s, as did her mum, so it was like a no-brainer. As soon yeah. as I found out that I had the BRCA, I was lucky I hadn't, hadn't, hadn't found out that I had yeah. breast cancer. It was, um, the doctor said that, like, my chances were that I should have almost had it by now. Mm. So it was, that's it. The reconstruction, again, was a no-brainer because I felt like if I had the opportunity to reconstruct, which I did, mm. because it was preventative, um, and I didn't have to have um, chemotherapy or anything afterwards, mm. um, that um, I was going to take it. I yeah. was given the opportunity to reconstruct, so, so I took it. But you don't really fully realise, no matter how many times they tell you or you watch the videos, how they're going to look and feel yeah. until it happens to you. Mm. Um, because looking from an outsider point of view, mm after they've all settled down and they're not swollen anymore, um, my husband thinks they look great. Right. You know, yeah. he's, he, he look, he, he's like, wow, he's like, yeah. you know, they're even better than before. <laughs> From an emotional point of view, um, waking up and realising that you don't have your breasts anymore, mm. um, but they're reconstructed helps. Yeah. I, can, I can't actually fathom, I can't imagine how painful emotionally it must be for women or yourself if you decide mm. not to do reconstruction to wake up and find that you're completely flat mm. it must be psychologically um just very 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 painful and yeah. very hurtful um especially women going through breast cancer having mm. to deal with the fact how they got it all out mm. what did they find um it's a very different situation to what to what i i'm in yeah. mine was preventative i didn't mm. have breast can cancer um so I was able to have reconstruction straight mm. away. The worst part about the whole thing was not being able to breastfeed AJ. Oh, right, yeah. So that was... Yeah. How old was he? So, was he? I had my... No, that was before he was born, wasn't it? Yes, yeah, so yeah. I had my breast removed when Faith was six months old. Mm. Um, and knowing that that was one of the, the repercussions, I felt, at the time, that it was a small repercussion mm. than, than having breast cancer, obviously. Yeah. It Again, it's a no-brainer. Mm. But when AJ was born, mm. and he's trying to latch on, mm. and there's nothing to get out, yeah. and the doctors were great, but a bit slow getting his bottle of milk to him, mm. That that I think that, that those 10 minutes was the worst 10 minutes of my life mm. since 
no finding out that I had BRCA at that mm. point. Yeah. Because I felt like I had been let down of a moment. Mm. I couldn't do what was what 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 I should be able to to do physically. Mm. Um, I couldn't give my son what I gave my daughter, so then I felt yeah. like he was neglected. Yeah. Um, it, it it took it took a long time to get over that. Yeah. Um, yeah. And what about? Do you ever get people who assume you've just had cosmetic? Um, augmentation and does that ever bother you you know in terms of yeah well you know that was apart from a, uh, that was one of the main reasons why I wanted to come out and tell people what I was going through right because I I I knew that would have happened yeah because they, they look very remarkably different mm. I had lo lost a lot of weight at the time. My mm. boobs were quite flat. They were a bit saggy. Um, you could, I, I, you could tell in clothes that I had, you know, I didn't really mm. have great boobs. Um, so what I knew as soon as having a reconstruction, it was, whoom, it was yeah. going to be like, you know, like I never went bigger. Obviously, I, I, I literally just came out the same size, but mm. they were, they are very much solid. Mm. So I knew that people were going to talk. People notice. And I, um, I didn't want people to think that it was a cosmetic mm. reason. I didn't want to think that it was a vanity reason. I wanted mm. people to know why I was doing this. Mm. And, um, and then when I started to talk about it, I realised the message to get across wasn't necessarily that. It was the BRCA. Yeah. It was educating people about this gene, about um, the gene that we all have. It's just that it's a mutated form of the gene. Right. Um, uh, um, because it was it was sort of known. In terms of me, you know, doing this blog about it, it's I've seen I've had people with um, Kicks Count come and say, you know, thanks to your awareness, my baby's been born. Thanks to your awareness, this has happened. Yeah. So I see firsthand the difference awareness makes. It it can't be underestimated. In terms of one person saying, you know, in terms of even if it's only ten of my friends who now go and check themselves. Um, because of what I'm going through, I would rather those yeah. ten people check themselves than than not do anything. And you do have people who are very private and want to keep it to themselves. And there may be, you know, other people in the public eye who've had breast reconstruction and we don't know. Um, but and that's their choice. Mm -hmm. But in terms of what it will do for other people who maybe want reconstruction or who it does take the fear out of it. Yeah. It takes a lot of the fear out of it in terms of no, that there's I'm going to have it, yeah. but. Do you know what she's had it and she's still got lovely husband lovely children she's still got her career she's still got you know you're still going to the red carpet events in the dresses and still looking in the spanx the same yeah <laughs> yeah but we've always had spanx, oh, we've always you know. had spanx anyway um, the spanx hides but, the uh, the the hysterectomy perhaps. yeah but there's there's all that kind of stuff that you sort of think well there are people going through it and to be able to see people who've gone yeah. through it i think makes a big difference in terms of how certainly how I feel about it and I imagine how other people yeah. feel about it as well and maybe people who probably won't message you on Twitter and say hey guess what <laughs> you've got to come film me yeah. um, you know there will be people out there who have been helped by it whether they contact you to tell you or not it's, yeah and, but, and, and that's what drives me so I mean or you know when if, if I, there is any negativity hmm. um, I, I do try and block it I try not to take any notice of it um, and I and and I won't stop doing what I'm doing. Yeah. You know, it's four years past since I found mm. out. Pretty much to the day actually that I found out that mm. I had BRCA. Um, Happy BRCA anniversary. And um, thank you very <laughs> much. Yeah. Cheers to that. Um, but it was. It's only been a year and a half since my hysterectomy. Mm. Today, actually, this afternoon, mm. I go for my um, hormone implant, which I have every six months. Mm. So this isn't going to go away for me. Yeah. Like I, I now have to live with the fact that I'm in early menopause, mm. that I need HRT to be able to function properly, mm. pretty much because I went through it at such a young age. Mm. I then have to go through the realisation that I'm ageing quicker, mm. um, the hot flushes, um, brittle bone disease, yeah. um, you know, we briefly touched on it in the last video. Um, there, there are countless... Um, side effects to going through menopause and then side effects going through it at such a young age as well um, the biggest one being no more children yeah. the, I suppose the, the emotional effect that that had on me um, even though I can't see these things yes. and I could see the breasts of, I, had a, I don't know if obvious is the right word but 
had a greater effect on me emotionally, mm. um, mentally, than removing the breasts. I was a bit matter of fact with that. Yeah. Um, but with the hysterectomy, it it was really tough. Mm. Um, going through it afterwards, the recovery was. I I, I thought it would be exactly mm. like um, the C sections that I've had to have. Um, I had them because I had um, um, a couple of heart problems, which I find now. But at the time, I needed his. Um, I needed um, C sections, and that's what, all I could compare it to. But it mm. it, it wasn't. Yeah. I mean, it's a much bigger surgery. Um, and just waking up and realizing that I, I, I'm, I'm now in an older part of my life, mm. at a younger part in my life than I should be. Yeah, you know, when I go to the breast cancer clinic, I'm the youngest person there by quite a mile. Um, and I don't feel there's people there who necessarily relate to the stage in life I'm at yeah. in terms of what I'm gonna be going through. And you know, that's where I found forums very useful. Uh, but again, you don't know them. Yeah. You know, it's all well and good hearing other people saying the same thing, but it's not someone you can relate to, mm -hmm. really. Um, so it's, yeah, it's a difficult thing, I think. I guess with the hysterectomy as well, it's very internal, isn't it? You've yes. got, whereas the breasts is, it can almost be a constant form of discussion. Yeah, you can, yeah, you I've seen it. Oh, yeah, 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 they're always there. Yeah, they're always there. You know, um, um, whereas hysterectomy, it's, if you don't know, you don't... You don't know, you, don't if know. you can't see it. No. It's, it's something... It's not Whereas like, like say, yeah. The, the it's not like I'm walking. Up. Yeah, yeah. It's not like I'm walking around and I feel empty. Yeah. There, there, there isn't any internal feeling. Mm. Apart, uh, you know, the only thing that that is there is the visible scar. Yeah. I have a bit of a pouch, um, which isn't going to go. Um, mm. just the way that it's kind of healed. Um, it's just difficult. That it's a difficult one. Yeah. To talk about. Yeah. Um, and when I am open about it in in media or whatever, mm. um, I don't think they write the full extent about what I've really tried to um, put out there. Yeah. Because I think even even people are scared because they think it's it's such a uh, cliche, not cliche. It's such a personal sensitive issue. Mm. I think people are scared. Yeah. To write about menopause. Mm. But there must be loads of women going through early menopause without having yes. a hysterectomy, yes. without having that. It's just a, you know, a medical thing. Yeah. It's, you know, I know people who've gone through the early menopause. Um, so again, it's something that people probably don't talk about and you probably don't, yeah. people don't know what to expect. But just because they haven't had the, the hysterectomy, they may still be going through mm -hmm. it and may you know, want to know what's normal and what yeah. to expect and... Well, but actually, I, I, sometimes yeah. knowing that not being normal is quite normal. Yeah, you know, in absolutely. Terms of if you want to scream into a pillow every night and you want to go <laughs> or and scream at the stand at the bottom of the garden and cry, yeah, that's part and parcel yeah. of it. It's just yeah, part of being medical. part of being a woman, right? <laughs> yeah. Like. yeah. Um, right. Well, on that note, we'll yeah. leave it there. Okay. Um, I I hope everybody has got something out yeah. of these videos. Um. And do you know what? I, th I think this is, could be a really nice strand to continue with, whether it's with Elizabeth or maybe mm. we could get some other people um, involved and maybe have Don't some kind me. of coffee. <laughs> no, I, won't, I won't ditch you. We'll have some coffee mornings. Yeah. Because I think there are, um, there are many stones unturned, I yeah, think. Yeah, I think there are more people um, going through it who may want to talk about definitely. it. Definitely. Don't. I and and this where. is a bit of therapy for me because I don't get to talk about it yeah. like this really. Um so so thank you. That's right. Thank you for joining me. <laughs> thank you for having me. And um thank you for watching. Um you know what I'm going to say, <laughs> hit like, hit subscribe. Um and most importantly on this video more than any other, comment on the below. I I want to know your thoughts. I want to know if you've got any other suggestions on topics that you'd like us to cover. Um, what you really want to know about menopause or breast cancer yeah. or um, mastectomies, reconstruction and if we can help you we will. Um, see you next time.